Hey, what's going on guys? This is Chunjakma, and today I'm going to show you my newest DPS PvP Esper build. Now, I've been having a lot of fun with this, and it's actually increased my survivability by a lot. So without further ado, let's begin. First off is your builder, Teleconnect Strike. Now, I tier this to tier 8 because with the newest patch, you can actually cast this while moving. So now you're a ranged DPS rather than, you know, Psychic Frenzy where you're a melee DPS. This is actually extremely nice for BGs and keeping your distance when fighting Stalkers and Warriors. At tier 8, this actually helps you generate side charges a lot faster than you could ever expect. With the new changes, this stacks every 3 charges instead of every 6. So you're going to get 2 side charges every 3 attacks instead of every 6, which is really, really nice. Now, for the finisher, I actually really, really like Teleconnect Storm. I was kind of surprised because before this, I was using nothing but Mind Burst. However, the big pluses to Telekinetic Storm is that it stays on the target and with the amps that I'm about to show you will actually do a crazy amount of damage the lower the player's health is. Now this also helps a lot with Stalkers. I generally place a Telekinetic Storm on them regardless of how many side points I have. If a Telekinetic Storm wears off a Stalker, I immediately put it back on if I have a 1 point Telekinetic Storm or a 5 point. It doesn't really matter because Stalkers tend to try to escape a lot and you'll actually be able to see them in stealth because of this skill. It'll follow them in stealth and you can see your telegraph. It's really fantastic. This also does a crazy amount of AoE damage. So in BGs, you'll finish off players on accident that you weren't even targeting. I love this ability. I highly suggest you try using it and I think you're gonna like it as much as I do. All right, so moving on to the support tree. Now, currently I have two extra ability points. So I just put them in uh, Phantasmal Armor. Phantasmal Armor is actually extremely good because it helps you survive and gives you Interrupt Armor. This Absorb plus your Innate, which is actually mobile now and does not root you, will help you survive a lot better. So I highly suggest taking this ability. Next up is your Utility Skills. I have three CCs in this build because I found that I do not really need Catharsis because I don't generally get hit very frequently because of all the CCs that I actually have and because I'm a ranged DPS now. So I use Crush to knock players down with Restraint to root them, as well as Incapacitate. Now the reason I use these three and decided not to use Shockwave is because at the base tier, Shockwave really doesn't push people back that far, and the other ones are just a lot more useful. If I root somebody, I can DPS them while they're rooted, or I can root plus crush them, which means they can't get out of it unless they use a CC break, which is a plus in my favor. Now, Incapacitate by itself is fantastic. It makes people confused, and you basically get uh, the full four seconds to DPS the target because they have no idea where their weapon is. As always, I'll have Fade Out to get out of CCs, as well as to reduce damage if I'm taking too much from players around me. This is your C only CC breaker. Please take it. You're going to regret it if you don't while in PvP. Last up is Projected Spirit. I use this both offensively and defensively. This is a great heal. I've seen it heal myself for 10k in a DPS spec, which is insane. And it also has a really far leap, which will help you catch players as well as get away from other players. Pick this up. You're going to love it. Trust me. Now, as for the amps, this is pretty general setup. However, I'll go over these really quickly. In the Assault Tree, obviously you get all the Assault Power ones to increase your DPS. Followed by Superiority, which will increase your initial burst by a ton because it increases your Moxie by 25%, which is your DPS spec. True Sight will help you to avoid getting deflected on your finishers. Follow Through will increase your Assault Power by a lot once you cast a finisher and land it. And finally, Wreckful, which after using a 5-point Psy finisher it will actually increase your critical hit severity by 18%. This will just make you hit a lot harder when you crit. Fantastic. I absolutely love it. Now the main reason I don't use the power is because A, it's a really short amount of time on your character and B, I really just didn't have the points to spare at the time. Now let's go over to hybrid assault support. I like crit over crit severity because if I can't crit, severity is not going to do crap for me. So I just get the 6% here and the extra point left over I put in severity. Now let's go to utility. Now this is the experimental part of my build because I actually changed something that I normally get in my other builds. So what I did is reduce cooldowns so that I can use my CC and my survival skills a lot faster. And currently I'm using inspirational charge. I'm still testing this. So this may not be worth it. Usually I'm getting something either like molasses, which will increase your survivability, or I'll put it over here in PVP defense along with Psychic Barrier, which is fantastic because it'll make it so you're pretty much uncritable. I mean, you'll get crit, but just not as frequently. Now, currently in this build, the PvP defense is currently bugged and will reduce your PvP defense instead of increasing it, so be careful of that. By the time you watch this video, that may be changed, so look into that. Now, the final section is Hybrid Assault Utility. This is basically what makes this build work. 
So if you don't put it into this, you're going to have a lot harder time. So I put it into PvP power because in the current way, in the current meta, PvP power is what you're going to need. And the lifesteal is really not going to help you too much. So I put it in the humanity, which is crazy with our current finisher. Because if you have this, you will be doing a lot of damage with your finisher. Because people at low health will not be able to outheal a double stack finisher when we use storm. So this is fantastic. I highly suggest it. Now, to make this even better is you get no remorse, which when people are snared, it will actually do approximately 400 extra magic damage to those targets. And the way you snare players is with this, slow it down. This has a 25% chance of applying a snare, which will reduce speed by 30% for 5 seconds. That's really slow, and it's going to help you, first of all, keep people away from you, as well as keep them in your distance to DPS them to the ground. This build is fantastic. I love it. There are some downsides, such as your finisher which is the telekinetic storm this sometimes misses and will go through targets so say for instance there's a tiny hill and they're directly in front of you sometimes they'll hit the hill bounce over the target and land behind them or sometimes they'll land directly at your feet and the final one that it kind of sucks is even if you're jumping while you cast this you may actually cast this over players so there's a little bit of uh, in this build and it kind of sucks when it happens but overall telekinetic storm generally lands and you'll get used to it i promise Try this build out. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I've been having so much fun. I've survived a lot better with this build, and I've been destroying players in BGs, as well as Arena. Now that was a super quick rundown of this build. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I love helping you guys, and I will be streaming this build, as well as making more videos with this build in use. So look out for that. All the information about my Twitch as well as my Facebook and Twitter are in the description below. I hope you guys enjoy this build as much as I have, and as always, I'll see you guys next time.